na ating email sa mga special number, much more na. Uh, that's a fully powerful word. Right. Thank you, Paul. That's a I can't uh, count the number, how many times we had uh, hosted different conferences here in this place. Uh, King James, you have count most of all, no? So uh, at least, ngayon na balik tayo. Kadang-kadang na hindi na host ang uh, youth camp dito sa Hope Mountain. We appreciate the initiative of Pastor Deacon na kahit pa paano pag walang uh, plano ang uh, Cebu, so siya ang nag uh, you know, substitute sa atin. So finally, na pag-usapan na mag-host tayo ngayon So, tumulong ang Cebu, kunti lang, tumulong kami para maging possible ito sa inyong lahat. Nagtatagalog ako dahil mayroon tayong bisita na mga taga-tapis, hindi sila masyado makakuha. Maybe yung uh, sasabihin natin Cebuano rito, mga 30 to 40 percent lang. Dahil iba din ang ilong ko eh. And then we have one from Manila, pamangkin ni Mrs. Bornales, anak ng kanyang kapatid. Nagsisimba na ito, bagong ligtas ito, nagsisimba na sa Amen. support natin sa Manila. Ayo, kakaterin. Okay. So you understand uh, na ganyan siya dahil bagong ligtas. Actually, pag gikan dito, mula rito, nadaan siya ng Cebu para mabagkais. Amen. So, uh, pag-pray natin na lalago siya at uh, lalaki din ang gawain doon sa Manila. Once a month lang tayo nagpupunta doon dahil sa una, ang time, ang pwede biyahan ng Cebu, and then ang pangalawa, ang finances. So, uh, so far, lumalago ang gawain sa Manila. Uh, I'm invited to a preach on a King James Conference uh, August 21 to 23. Amen. Hosted by Pastor Bobby Pulardo sa Maynila. So kung sino sa inyo ang nagpaplano, kung gusto ninyo makapunta sa Maynila, then uh, make plans. Malaki pa man ang oras, panahon. Tatlong buwan pa. Mayo, Ponyo, Julio, Agosto. Apat na buwan na pagtitipon. Okay. At least na challenge siya mag-boss nung siya yung natin sa Cebu. Amen. Okay. Ngayong gabi, dadako tayo sa ating text sa Deuteronomy chapter number 31. Deuteronomy 31. At uh, gagamitin ko ang verse 29 as our text. And then pupunta tayo doon sa 2 Corinthians 11 after this. So basahin natin ang sabay-sabay. Ready? Deuteronomy 31 verse 29 now. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and he will be called you in the latter days, because he will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke you to anger, to hurt your hands. Okay, punta tayo sa 2 Corinthians, chapter number 11. Number three, kasahin natin ng sabay-sabay muli. Ready? Start. But I fear that such a thing is as a certain reality to be so certainly so that your mind should be wrapped up in the same way that it is to us. Tayo po ay lumak 
lumapit sa Panginoon sa panalangin. Ngayong gabi, sa inyong mga nakakilala, for the past 29 years, ay hindi nagbago ang aking preaching. Praise the Lord, Amen. I never put off punches. I preach the word. Right. At nais kong maramdaman ninyo ngayong gabi na as the days go by, I do not get off my guard. Especially, we are on the last days. Now, some of you may not like what I'm going to expose tonight. Right. Some of you may not like what I'm going to say. Right. Right. Some of you might be mad. Maaari ang iba sa inyo rito ay nasuko o madali. Maaari ang iba sa inyo ay buwi bukas. Dahil hindi nyo kaya ang fixing na ganito. Tonight is the first test of your patience and how you observe the Word of God. Right, amen. Narinito tayo sa panahon na we have more entertainers in the pulpit rather than preachers of the Word of God. That's why bumubunga ito ng napaka-weakling na kristyanismo. Moses said while he was talking or addressing these words to the nation of Israel before his death, he said, For I know that after my death, you will utterly correct yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And even will befall you in the latter days, meaning in the last days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Ang naubisahan nila na rebellion, corruption, ay minamana natin ngayon. At kung hindi tayo magbantay, kagaya ng nasabi ni Pablo sa kanyang nasulat na kababasa naman natin sa 2 Corinthians 11, ay kagaya, kagaya tayo ni Eve doon sa Garden of Eden, na sabi niya, ako'y natatakot, I fear less by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So my final plan ang jablo na sirain ang ating generasyon ngayon. At ang mga plano na yan ay buhay na buhay sa ating mga kalagit na. Let me preach to you tonight Satan's final plan to corrupt this present generation. Ang pinagkapinali, why I say final? Because we're in the last days. No one could argue with me about the time of our days today. We are in the last hour. Sabi pangalila, we are on the last hour of the last hour. Malapit na siyang babalik. At kaya full blast ang ating kaaway. Ang sabi pa sa book of Revelation, lahat ay gagawin ng job to deceive, to corrupt, to destroy, because he knew it that he had been a short time. Right. Ang malungkot sa ating panahon ngayon, napapakinggan natin ang mga warnings na ito, mga preaching ng ating mga pastors. And yet, iimim tayo Pag-uwi natin, kalimutan, babalik tayo as if walang nangyari. When we are beguiled by the enemy, we are deceived by the enemy at nagsisimula ang corruption. Kung mayroon mang pinaka most corrupt generation na pwede natin ibilang na most ay wala ng ating generasyon ngayon. 
Amen. This is the most corrupt generation. Amen. Dahilan po sa mga bagay na uh, tinatanggap din natin sa kaaway. O pwede rin kayo ng kaaway, ang dalit lang natin na kanya. Kaya nga sabi ko, pagdating ni Antichrist, hindi na magtataka ang tao. In fact, they will welcome him with a big house. They will be happy and they will make a uh, maybe a rejoicing or uh, matawag natin na uh, uh, welcome sa kanya dahilan sa kanyang pagdating. At pag nagsabi siya na magpatatak ang lahat ay nagkakaganda pa maglinya. Why? Because we're now program and condition for that son event. Right. And we condition na tayo mga kapatid. What are the things that the devil is using to corrupt this present generation. So, pupunta po tayo sa unang bagay na ginagawa ng Diablo to corrupt our present generation. Number one, corrupting our minds. The first plan or the first attack of the devil to corrupt this present generation is to start with the minds. Corrupting our minds. Go with me to uh, 1 Timothy 6, verse number 12. 1 Timothy 6, verse number 12. Not verse 12, but verse 5. Ang sabi po dito, Let me go back to verse number 3. If any man lives otherwise and consent not, to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the words and to the doctrines which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but nothing about uh, questions and stripes of words, work of coming in this strife, railings, evil services, perverse disputings of men, of what? Of our minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Pag ang mind natin ay makula, automatic ang action natin ay apektado. Right. Lalabas ang nasasunod. Sabi ka niya, what defileth a man is not the outside that come in to you, that enters to you. It's in the inside that corrupt you. So kung ano yung nandiyan na sa, uh, sa ating isipan, yung mind natin, yan ang unang tinatarget ng kaaway. Napapansin nyo ba pag kayo'y natutulog, nakakapanaginip kayo at magtataka kayo, hindi naman ako nag-iisip ng umo, bakit naka, nakapanaginip ako ng multo o kaya mga horror o mga bagay. Because once we are asleep, our minds is inactive. And that's where the devil can work in that mind. Wala kasi tayong control pag natutulog tayo. Now, pag tayo'y gising at hindi tayo nagagwardya, we're not watchful, ano ang pumapasok sa ating mind? He can put millions of evil things in our mind to corrupt us. Ang pinaka grabe na corruption sa ating minds karon is the Facebook. Amen. Ayaw pag imin-imin ha, pag hindi mo ganit tinangtang ang imong Facebook, you will stand before God and that will be a witness against you. Right. This will be my last message exposing about this evil book. The book that is against God's book. Imbes na pupunta tayo ng Bible, we are obsessed, obsessed na ang tao, hala, nandoon na lahat, nandoon na lahat. At na, tumatanggap tayo, we lack discernment, we lose our discernment, na ito'y paraan ng jablo para alisin tayo sa Bible, at doon na ang ating pagmamahal sa mga bagay na ito. That's why kung papansin ninyo, humihina ang ating mga simbahan, ang mga young people that why half-hearted na sa ilang dedication, wala ng sacrificio, why nandudungon na sa Facebook, their minds are connected on the right. right. 
Everybody's online, at least almost everybody. Seven in ten. This is not from me. This is from the statistics that I have researched. Now, ang binigay ko doon sa Cebu at kay Pastor Mabralala, 2011 yun, nakakuha ko ng bago. As of 2015, there are 4.5 billion FB or Facebook users. At isa ka dyan. Amen. Kung ikaw ay nagagamit ng Facebook, isa ka dyan sa 4.5 billion. And you're making Zuckerberg one of the richest in the young people right now. Number one, siya na pinakamayaman dahil tayo ang nagpapayaman sa kanya, yung founder ng Facebook. Approximately 7 in every 10 people on earth are using Facebook. 60% ages between 16 to 45 are Facebook users. 80% are logged in on any given day. Pero mo na. Now, ang population ng ating sangibutan is only 7.2 or 7.3. 4.5 is more than half. 